Oh, hi. A few months ago, I was at a lumber yard buying lumber, and I saw these two pieces on sale, and I just had to grab them. These colors are so gorgeous. The first one is called Purple Heart, and it's a hardwood, really dense, food safe, and it has this beautiful purple color that is its natural color. So this hasn't been stained to look like this. This is what it really looks like. Then I also grabbed this other one, and it's called Paduk. Like the Purple Heart, it is dense and hardwood, and it has this beautiful natural red color, and I fell in love with them both, and I just had to grab them. And I haven't been able to think of what to do with either one since. Until now! Well, I'll be using just one today, but I wanted to show them off because... Come on, look how pretty! So, as you can probably tell by the title, today I'll be making a decorative hair fork. Which, I bet is a term that some of you are hearing for the first time today. And then I'll also engrave a design on it by hand, which is something that I've never done before today. So, we're all gonna be learning something. This height that I have here is already perfect for what I need, so I initially wanted to cut the piece along this way, because that way I have the biggest piece possible left over for a future project. The problem with that is... I have to keep in mind which direction the grain goes in, because that determines how much force the wood can take before it breaks. And I don't want it breaking as I'm trying to jam it into my hair. It might sound ridiculous, but I've had pencils break in my hair before, so it's definitely a thing. So, because of this, I'm going to cut it along the grain, and then I'll just use the top half to make the fork with it, and I'll save the bottom half for something else later. This isn't ideal scrap optimization, but... I have to consider the placement of what I'm making, not just how the scraps are going to be left. The first step is to rip the wood on my bandsaw to the width that I want. This was the easiest part of the process. And a complete tangent here, but in case you can't tell, I have a cold. But before I started recording this, I managed to convince myself that I sound just fine and that no one's gonna be able to tell. And now that I'm doing the voiceover and I can hear myself talking, I am so clearly not fine. I sound nasally and I should have totally put this off, but now that I started, I can't stop. Okay, sorry, focus. <laughs> then I cut the piece in half. And then came the worst part of the project for me, which is the resawing. So just to cover this really quick for anyone who doesn't know the terms, when you cut the wood along the grain, like this, that's called a rip cut. When you cut it across the grain, like this, it's called a cross cut. When you cut the piece lengthwise, or thin it out, so to speak, that's called resawing. The piece that I just cut, I cut it to the correct length and width, but it's way too thick for a hair fork. I would never be able to use it. So I have to run it through my bandsaw and slice it so that it's thinner. And let me tell you, this part sucked. I mentioned at the start of the video that paduk is a hard, dense wood, but I didn't realize what that really meant until this step. The bandsaw actually struggled quite a bit. I had to feed the wood in and then pull it back a bit and wait, and then feed it in again and then pull back again. I included this footage because if you look off to the side in the left, you can see it start to smoke. And this piece isn't even that big. So this is great for durability of whatever it is that I'm making, but it makes it really hard to work with. But I survived! In the end, I had these two pieces. I only needed the thinner one, so we'll save the other one for later. Now I can take this little stencil I drew out and use that as a guide. First, I sprayed it with adhesive, and I made sure to get the glue all over my hands. And after I had that placed how I wanted it, I went onto my smaller bandsaw to cut the general shape. This blade is pretty thin, but it's still too thick to handle the super curved parts really well. So the first thing I always do in these scenarios is cut notches around all the curves. 
This way the pieces will just break off and I can cut through it somewhat seamlessly. I will say though, doing this made me want to buy a scroll saw. I don't need it, but I want it. I think I'm giving myself five projects where I have to make these kinds of cuts using the bandsaw before I convince myself that I need this purchase. So this is one. Four more projects to go and mama gets a new toy. This is what I have so far. It's a super rough cut, but now I can grab a Dremel and start sanding it down even further. This is where we get into the tedious area because this is way less skill based and mostly just patience. I just kept sanding it down until it eventually matched the stencil that I glued on it. And once the outline did match the stencil, I ripped off the paper, sanded the surface a bit so that it's smooth and ready for engraving, and then I also used the Dremel to taper the legs so that I have an easier time getting them through my hair. Then I grabbed this engraving Dremel bit and I started outlining. I wasn't originally planning on doing this bit at first, and I planned on just using the regular Dremel to go in and do the design, but this wood is so hard and so tough to work with that I could not pull a straight line for the life of me. So I figured if I use this first and kind of just create an outline, then when I switch I can use this outline as a guide and have my Dremel glide along the lines that I made way easier. It ended up working out how I planned, and after I made the switch it was a lot easier to draw a semi-straight line. I'm calling it straight, but it's as straight as I could get it, so it'll have to do for now. And again, this was all patience. I just wanted to add some detail into this thing to make it more interesting to look at, because I felt like just an outline of a butterfly was kind of lazy. So I kept going for what felt like hours. My hand was hurting from holding this stupid machine. And then, my friend tells me that we have this pencil extension for it that's brand new, never used, and it's way more comfortable to hold, and it doesn't vibrate as much, and I wish I knew about this like two hours prior. But, after setting that up, it was so much more comfortable to hold. So if anyone out there is using a Dremel for engraving, do yourself a favor and get this extension. Night and day difference. But yeah. I just kept plugging away with this and trying to add more dimensions to the design. I didn't want to do too much because I definitely have a tendency to not know where to stop with these things and I can sometimes overdo it. And I really, really didn't want to make a mistake here because, like I said, this wood has been such a pain to work with. If I mess up, I was not going to start over. So one mistake and this whole thing was going into the trash and I was just going to call it a day. When I was satisfied with the engraving, and by satisfied I mean when I felt like I couldn't possibly do any better and we just started ruining it, I grabbed some alcohol and wiped the whole thing down so that I can prep it for the finishing step. The alcohol wipe is an important trick for when you have to apply finish to your piece, but you have a lot of dust on it that you have to wipe away first. If you use a damp rag with water to wipe down your piece after sanding it, the water will just end up raising the grain and then you'll need to sand it down again, which will create more dust than you need to wipe away, and you see the problem, you get stuck in a cycle. If you use alcohol instead of water, because alcohol evaporates so quickly, the grain won't have time to rise again, so you won't undo any of that sanding that you did for the prep. It's a great little trick, and I've used it a lot. And finally, I put on a coat of poly to protect the wood and bring out this color, and then I let the whole thing dry. I used a satin finish, which is usually my go-to. I tend to stay away from anything that's super glossy because I feel like it cheapens the quality of the wood. I just can't imagine working with a nice piece, putting in the effort into sanding it and bringing out the grain, and then coating it in what looks like plastic. So semi-gloss is the glossiest I will ever go. But that's enough of my rants. Let's see how this thing works. I actually like the shape, and I like how it functions. 
it holds my hair up really well, which isn't an easy thing to do because I have a lot of it and it gets pretty heavy. I think the color also works really well with my hair color, so I'm glad that I went with the red instead of the purple heart. I'm actually happy with how all of this turned out. The engraving part? I don't hate it. It's my first time doing this and this wood is really dense, so that didn't do me any favors, so I'm trying to give myself credit where credit is due and not be too critical. I think I'll improve with practice the more I do this and the more I engrave things, but overall, I'm not too upset at the result. I obviously could have done a way better job with both cutting out and engraving this thing had I just used either the CNC machine or the laser, both of which I do have at the shop, but like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I know that those two aren't as common, so not a lot of people have them. So because of that, I decided to make this by hand entirely. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe people have these two machines, or maybe they would like to see how they're used and then decide from there if they want to purchase them. So in case anyone is interested in seeing how I would use a CNC or a laser for a project, then I don't know, I think they would be cool to show. So just let me know in the comments if this is something that you might be interested in. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you sticking with me. I hope this video made sense because I'm way sicker than I thought. And now that I'm looking back on what I recorded so far, it kind of feels like a fever dream. So I hope that I don't get better in a few days and I realize that none of this makes any sense. In any case, please make sure to let me know your thoughts. As always, the good, the bad, and the disappointed is always welcome. I want to hear it all. And until next time. Bye.